Oh, hi, Internet. Today we are going to look at a new movie called The Disaster Artist, directed by and starring James Franco and also starring his brother Dave. What a funny story, huh? Okay, now that we have that out of the way, one fateful day, a young, aspiring San Franciscan actor, Greg Sestero, met the weirdest person walking God's green earth, Tommy Wiseau. And somehow, this meeting blossomed into a beautiful friendship. Both men decided to go to Hollywood to seek fame and fortune. And they failed. They didn't necessarily fail on the same level, but they both failed. And so they decided, fuck it, let's just make our own movie. And thus, the cinematic disaster piece, The Room, was born. And this is the part where I would jokingly say, and then it got weird, but who the fuck am I kidding? It was weird from day one. Now, as longtime viewers will know, I am not the most well-read person on the planet, but I have actually read the book this time. And it's fantastic. I highly recommend it. And as a fan of the book, I thought this movie was incredibly well done. I really enjoyed this. I honestly wasn't sure going in that James Franco would be the best person to play Tommy Wiseau, but man, he proved me wrong. He nailed it. And I don't just mean the accent, although he did do a really good job with that, but his ego, his mysterious nature, and just general weirdness, he really did an excellent job portraying Tommy Wiseau. Some of the shit he says in this movie just had me in stitches. There is a moment where Greg's mom is trying to find out just how old Tommy is, because Tommy never reveals his actual age, of course. And he at first says, oh, I'm his age. Oh, you're 19? Well, guess what? I just turned 14. And I'm not going to tell you what Tommy's response was to that, but it was just fantastic. Oh my god, so funny. And I guess this should not come as a surprise, considering they are brothers, but James and Dave played off each other very well. And the movie gives us a very interesting look at the bizarre friendship between these two, which at times is actually kind of beautiful in a what fresh hell is this sort of way, and at other times it's also a bit unsettling. Tommy is very much the abusive boyfriend in this bromance, and I don't mean, like, physically abusive or anything, but just emotionally so. He does genuinely seem to care about his friend Greg, but he's also very controlling and lashes out when he doesn't get his way and gets jealous easily. There is a scene where Greg and Tommy go to this nightclub and Greg starts chatting up the bartender while Tommy is on the dance floor busy doing something that might be mistaken for dancing from a distance from a great distance, and as soon as Tommy realizes Greg is daring to chat up some girl, he's like, Greg, we have to go now. Like, dude, stop cock-blocking your best friend. What's wrong with you? There are times when it's easy to feel sympathy for Tommy because he genuinely tries so very hard to achieve his dream of being a big movie star, but he's just so bad at... everything. But later on, the movie will inevitably remind you that Tommy is, in fact, a selfish asshole, and out the window the sympathy goes. And I am glad that they did not ignore that part of his personality and make him a completely sympathetic character, because honestly, I don't think he's earned that. In a weird way, I can kinda see why Greg would be so enchanted with this guy, because he is truly unlike anyone else. But he's really just as much Tommy's friend as he is his victim. There are times when their friendship seems so charming and genuine and they really do bring out the best of each other. And there are other times when I'm thinking, Greg, you idiot, get out of there. Or, Greg, you idiot, stop encouraging him. I have read the book, I have seen the movie, and still I do not fully understand how Greg sat there and read that first draft of the script to the room and managed to say to Tommy with a straight face, Wow, Tommy, this is great. Compared to what? And the amazing thing is, they are still friends to this day. And sometimes I wonder if that's really the best thing for either of them. And of course, a big chunk of this movie deals with the making of The Room. One of the best worst movies ever. And if you have seen The Room, and you know just what kind of a mess that is, then 
watching them reenact the making of the room is every bit the train wreck you'd expect and more. Tommy is constantly showing up late to set and treating his actors and his crew like shit. He thinks he's God's gift to filmmaking, even though he doesn't understand how anything works. He simultaneously filmed the movie in 35mm and HD because he didn't know the difference. He hires a script supervisor and won't let him read the script. He cannot remember the simplest of lines, lines he wrote, by the way, and it just keeps going and going and going and going. Just damn near everything about the making of this movie was wrong. It's no wonder it turned out the way it did. There are a few moments of greatness in there, though. The scene where Chris R. threatens Denny, which was originally done in an alley, not on the roof, and it was done on a set made to look like an actual alley that was outside the studio. Why didn't they just film it in the actual alley instead of in the studio? I, I just, I, it, Tommy. But that moment when Chris R. threatens Denny legitimately scared the shit out of the people on set. He really owned that role. And of course, after that one scene, Chris R. is never mentioned again. Now, compared to the book, there are a few minor details here and there that were changed. There are a few things in the book that did not make it into the movie, which makes sense because if they tried to film this entire thing, the movie would be 10 hours long. And some of the omissions did leave me feeling a little disappointed, but overall, I thought they did a damn good job condensing this into two hours. The streetcar named Desire scene alone. Oh, I was so looking forward to that. And it was beyond my expectations. That was fucking brilliant. I definitely recommend this movie. It's very funny, very entertaining. James Franco's performance is fantastic. He might even get an Oscar nom out of this. We'll see. And it is a fascinating look at the people who made one of the biggest cinematic blunders of all time. If you haven't seen The Room, I don't know that it's absolutely necessary in order to enjoy this movie, but it might help put a few things in perspective. And if you have not read the book, I don't think that's necessary either, but I do recommend the book because it's excellent and goes into much greater detail over all the shit that Greg and Tommy went through. And even though this is not a comic book movie, it does have an after credit scene, so stay all the way through to the end of the credits. And that's about all I have to say about The Disaster Artist. What the funny movie, Mark. Until next time, take care.